hey, hey, it's me. You know, that light bulb trying to help us all through the darkness. Hey, like a firefly. But anyways, this morning I was um, having to make rules with all my kids at work because I have 19 kids. 21 if they're all there. But um had to start making rules for them. And it, they're so simple, you know. Listen, keep your hands, your feet, your body to yourself. Respect personal space. Um, do what you're told. Don't talk back. Just all these simple things. And it's weird because when I was a kid, we were taught these things. I don't know what happened from the 80s into the 90s into the... 2000s and then it just kept going and getting more and more chaotic and toxic. I don't know what happened but There's even that golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you and I had to explain that doesn't mean you go around and React no, that's saying that you're the one that's the leader and one of the kids said is that are you saying fire plus fire equals fire and I had to get him to explain what he was trying to say to me. And in the end, I'm like, yes, because we're talking about taking responsibility for your actions. You know, if you do something and you have to go take a time out or just be removed from the situation, if you make it, I didn't do that. They're lying. I mean, these kids constantly call each other liars. And I could sit there and watch it with my own two eyes and be like, my job, I get paid to watch you. I'm watching it happen, and you're saying that they're lying, but I watched you. They're not held accountable. And when they are held accountable, and all they're asked to do is apologize, some of them refuse to do it. They would rather take a time out, and then they still have to get up and go apologize. But kids have become so stubborn and hard-headed. But I see it in their parents as well. Like, can't tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. But... As much as that's disrespectful, this is the audacious attitude that adults have. Thinking they know everything, teaching their kids things that aren't necessarily serving them as a benefit to life. Like one of my kids is a lot smaller than the other kids. You know, he, he probably comes up to, no, I'll give it, he comes here and the other ones are more here and some are here. But the smaller one his dad is smaller and he's taught him all the kids are going to pick on you because you're small. Stand up for yourself. Don't take nothing from them. Well, I had to point out to this kid the other day because this girl shows up, has bruises showing on her back because he's steadily just kicking her and kneeing her in the back trying to make her go down the slide. And these kids all have problems with each other. It's certain kids and their parents blame that kid and those parents blame that kid. But I sit there and watch them all day, and they're all working together to be jerks. <laughs> like, they take turns picking on each other. Well, he did this. She did that. So that's where the rules had to come in. And um, when it boils down to it, I had to tell the kid that his dad keeps telling him, you're small, they're going to pick on you. I had to remind him, you can walk away. And he said, what? Because I said, why did you do that? They made me mad. That doesn't mean it's okay to put your hands on somebody. And then you're making an excuse saying why you did it. You could walk away. Find an adult. Ask for help. What? I said, no one's ever told you that? No. It's like you're being taught to stand up for yourself, but are you being taught not to put your hands on everybody else? And it's clear to see, no. Like I said, I don't know where the life lessons are at. But a six-year-old taught me today, you add fire to fire, you're going to get fire. <laughs> so for all these parents that you're teaching your children through your insecurities, you are adding fire to fire. You are creating chaos. You are making your children so insecure because not only do they carry your insecurities, they have their own insecurities. And a lot of the what they're being taught is misguiding them and they're being bullies and then playing the victim. And it just really, it is perplexing how lost this new generation is. And us as caregivers sit here and go, 
scary part is they're going to be government officials at some point. They're going to be the police officers. They're going to be the medical providers. Incompetent, heartless individuals are being raised and we're going to expect them to make rules and help save our lives when we're the elderly population. It's almost like people forget the cycle. You're born, you have your heyday, you have your children, you teach your children. You become older, you pass away, they take your place. It, it's, it keeps going. But we seem to have forgotten this, that it's going to keep going. How you teach your children today is going to affect how they're going to take care of you later. And I keep having to harp on this because I keep seeing this. I've been all over the place. I have been to three different countries. I've lived in probably 15 different states. I've traveled to at least 35 states in the U.S. And I will tell you, disrespect and entitlement runs rampant through the streets. And a lot of it is the parents aren't parenting. They throw their children to the side. They make excuses as to why they're busy. And other adults don't speak up. And then when other adults do speak up, that parent, ah, and lets you know you're not their parent. Somebody needs to be. I have to keep reminding people, it takes a village to raise children. And for all the adults that have their head up their ass, go fuck yourself. Because you are creating chaos. And I really hope everyone will start sharing these messages. Because I'm tired of being the only person going, you suck. Your product is not good. And you're making it okay in their mind to become the future entitled individual that's going to throw a fit. That's going to pick a fight. That's going to stand there like an idiot. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. Demanding everyone come at you with respect. But yet there's not one inkling of respect in your bones. I was taught respect is not given, it is earned. We need to go back to the basics to life. You don't have to like me, but you will respect me. If you don't like me, you can walk away. Don't put your hands on me. I don't care what you say behind my back. Have the courage to say it to my face so I can at least laugh in your face. We need to start raising ourselves back up to realize we're capable, strong, powerful. Did you know that you are? Because if you know that you are, teach it to the children, the youth. Because honestly, right now, I've become a guidance counselor. I have had to become a parent to a lot of children. I have had to practice patience beyond patience. And I'll tell you, when you get an attitude with somebody, you better expect you're going to get it right back. If you're disrespectful, it's flowing right back to you. As you're passing it out, it's coming from behind. So you can deal with yourself. And all of that is to go, hey, hey, what? You do it too. Cut it out. Right? Plain and simple. Because if you want to see a change, you stop it. That's like sitting there knowing, okay, I want to have this house, right? I want all, I want to have a meadow, I want to have a stream, and then you don't notice where you're building it. Say you build it on a floodplain, and you weren't prepared for that, and then you lose everything and say, I didn't know. It's the same with the way that we rear our children. What you put in, the research you discover the knowledge you pass on. These are the ways they're going to interact in life. Don't, don't give them a faulty foundation that's going to make them sink or everyone's going to hate them and they become suicidal because it's on you to build them up. Shoot, one of the women at work, I mean, her kids come there. She doesn't work there. She's just one of the mothers. She's on vacation. Keep sending her kids to daycare. Oh, they're just kids. 
This is the prime time, mama. You don't have forever with them. I'm over here going, oh my God, one of my kids is about to leave the house. Spread his wings, fly. That's hard to accept. It happened so fast. And luckily I gave him the time to nurture him, feed him fruitful information, life skills. Taught him to respect others, to respect himself, to stand up when you see somebody bullying somebody else. Tried to teach him virtuous values that would not only enhance his life and his future, but everyone that meets him. Because yes, as much as this is our show, we still have players on the stage. We still have to interact in a way that is acceptable towards one another. If not, you might as well give your baby a knife and tell them to go take out their anger on their stuffed animals or their brother or their sister. Because this is where they're going in life. I see so many kids angry right now. And I had to talk to them today about sensory overload. And the only question I asked them a couple questions. How many of you get upset? Out of my 19, about 10 raised their hands. And I said, okay, do your ears normally start buzzing? Do you get where you want to just cover your ears? You notice your body starts getting hot. You start wanting to hit something. Lash out. Every one of them. And I had to explain to them that is called sensory overload. You're in a situation, you've been hurt, you're angry, you're losing control of your emotions. When you feel that way, remove yourself from the situation. Talk to me, talk to someone else. I can help try to calm you down. And a lot of them, they only need about 10 minutes to redirect their focus. And an apology does wonders. But like I had to explain to one of them today, I'm sorry eventually holds no value. If you're saying I'm sorry 20 times a day, it doesn't mean anything. Just like you can accidentally break someone's leg, I'm sorry is not going to fix that. So we have to start holding ourselves more accountable. Because like I said, a six-year-old had to put the saying out there, when you add fire to fire, you can only get fire, right? Maybe some of us adults need to realize that. Quit putting kerosene on your children that are burning inside. Full of hate, rage, anger. Because a lot of kids don't live with their two biological parents. A lot of them have different households, different rules. Because the parents are all fighting and competing with one another. I don't give a shit if you like your ex. Try to work together so your kids still have some form of stability in their life. There are the ones moving back and forth, back and, back and forth. Different rules, different rooms, different brothers and sisters, different lives. Their life is complicated, not yours. And I'm really tired of watching all of these children be so broken because I, I have a thing about personal space. I don't care to be touched. But I'm having to love on these kids on a regular basis. I don't mind it. They're children. But for the fact that they're coming to be watched by a stranger that becomes more of a loving caregiver than the family they go home to, there's no excuse for that kind of behavior. It breaks my heart. And I really hope that other people start to see the light and spread the message that these children... And this world are the fucking future. Start looking at it, understanding they deserve better than what they're being offered. And a lot of them aren't even asking for anything. They just want time, love, attention. And they're learning that any attention is good attention. So they'll act up because they get noticed. Because the sad thing is, you'll remember the kid's name that acts up 
a lot sooner than you will the quiet kid in the corner. So, something that needs to come out. Like I said, not all my messages are full of love and light. Some of them are, wake the fuck up. Let's do something as a collective population and ensure that the future has a chance to be fruitful. That love doesn't stop with us because it's not fair. And no, life wasn't promised to be fair. But you as a person that wants to lay down with somebody else to make someone else, you owe it to them, not yourself. I gave up the concept of my enjoyment when my children came along. It's not a sacrifice. Family is not a sacrifice. Teach them to love. Even if you only teach them to love themselves, teach them to love. Because you are the one that they're sponging off of. You can blame everyone else around you, but the product of your genetics, your teachings, what you allow, that's on you. I'm going to leave it on that note. Peace, love, and light. Bye-bye.